Happy Friday, everybody. We made it. Another week down. It's the weekend. Let's go. And it's hockey season. Hey, welcome back to Hockey Talk. If this is your first time here, I'm Joe. I'm your host of this show, this new show. If you're a returning uh, viewer subscriber, welcome back. I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this intro, except to tell you to go subscribe if you haven't already. If you're watching, thanks for watching. Let's get into the show, guys. It's hockey season. Oh, my gosh. We've had two hockey games so far. If you're a Penguins fan, if you're not, we have had a lot of hockey games so far. If you've watched more than one. How about the Kraken game, by the way? Kraken Vegas. Vegas looks good. I like that Kraken uniform. I like the colors. I don't like the logo, but I like the colors. Anyway, let's get into some Penguins hockey. We've had two games so far. The Florida road trip, we escaped it with three points, three out of four. I'll take it, man. You got no Crosby, no Malkin. Yeah, no Gensel for that first game. Matheson's down, no problem. They got it done. They look good in that first game against Tampa. Florida's another story. We'll talk about that. But let's talk about the Tampa game real quick first. They look good that whole game, guys. Like, that team, I mean, they were faster. They were on the four check. Their time and space was perfect. Tampa had no room that entire game to do anything, to set anything up, to get into the offensive zone, to get a four check going. The third period, they had some pushback to be expected, but that whole game, Pittsburgh looked really good, like solid. Uh, they ended up winning the game 6-2. to two. That third period, the last five minutes, may have been the wildest into a game I've ever seen in my life. John Cooper pulled the goalie uh, with five minutes left to go, down by three. An onslaught of goals and empty net goals ensued. I don't know what was going on, guys. Uh, that was interesting, but let's start at the beginning. First off, uh, Penguins scored six goals in that game, three empty netters. It's the first time they've ever had three empty net goals in a game. But the first three goals, Heinen scored the first one, Brian Boyle, Simone, all offseason acquisitions. That's what you like to see going into the first game of the season, right? Um, and all those guys look really good in that first game. Uh, we got empty net goals from Blue, Bluger, Rodriguez, and Rust. Uh, my overall thoughts on that game, first off, Tampa looked kind of slow. You know, they looked like a team who had been partying all summer. You know, their bellies are probably full of liquor and pizza. They look sluggish. Um, but the Penguins look good, and you can't take that away from them. They looked really good. Again, they were on that four check. They looked faster dominated the whole game other than the power play, which we're going to talk about later. <sighs> power play looks sad so far. I know you don't got your big guys, but still, we'll get into that. Uh, and then last night, Florida, they lost 5-4. to four. This was kind of a reverse of the Tampa game. Florida was the faster team. Florida was the better team. Pittsburgh had no time and space. We had no time to set up. Through two periods, they couldn't establish a four check at all. I mean... But you got to give it to Florida. Florida is a really good team. They're fast. They're tough. Uh, they got good leadership on the ice. Joe Quinville is their, co their coach. That's a good team. That's a team I expected to go really deep in the playoffs last year, and I was surprised when they didn't. Uh, but Florida looked like the better team through most of that game. De Smith played really good early, uh, kept that at a two-goal game. Third period, Penguins bounced back a little. They got goals from Heinen again. Two goals, two games. I like that. Uh, the legendary Jeff Carter, Gensel, man, that goal was beautiful. Behind the net, he waited. He waited the patience on that goal. That's a veteran play from Gensel, and that's what we like to see. That was a beautiful bounce goal or deflection goal. Rodriguez had a goal. Uh, the Pins ended up taking the game, and then they let – so they pulled ahead in the third. Florida battled back. Uh, it all started with that pile up on Casey to Smith, which was ridiculous. Like you guys got a, I mean, there was bodies everywhere. De Smith couldn't do anything on that. Oh, that was just the Penn's defense. They like to collapse. They've been doing that for years. They like to collapse too close to the goalie. You can't do that. Like you're not there to play goaltender. You're there to play defense. You need to keep guys out of the crease, not try to get into the crease. And they do that every year. Uh, but that was, you know, the Smith couldn't do anything about that. Florida came back. They won the game in overtime, but. All things considered, I think uh, getting a point out of that Florida game is good because they were not the better team in that game. Uh, they looked slower. They battled back. And you stole points. So you leave Florida. You leave your opening road trip uh, with three points to start the season. That's a win. 
Uh, they're perfect on the PK so far. The penalty kill looks really good. I think uh, that's one of the pluses of adding Brian Boyle. He's a great penalty penalty killer, and we've seen it early in the first two games of the season. So let's talk about the power play. Even without Crosby, even without Malkin, that power play should not look that bad. And we've been seeing this for a while now, a couple years. Uh, even when the Penguins have had a good power play, it's usually good for a period of time, like to get them to the top five, and then it just stinks for a long time. Um, and we kind of saw this last year. Like when you're on the power play, it shouldn't be a disadvantage. But almost every power play the Penguins get, it looks like they're on a disadvantage, and the opposing team has more scoring chances. Now, it looked bad in Tampa. It looked worse in Florida. Uh, they can't even get it in the zone. I mean, there's no setup. And you still got skilled guys out there. You have, you have Kapanen, who's skilled. You got Latang, who's been on the power play for years. He's, the, he's kind of the quarterback of the power play. Um, you had Gensel back in Florida. You have Rust. And it just didn't look good. They couldn't set up. They couldn't get anything going. Um, and it's, it's – even when the second power play's in, too – the Penguins need to stop. You have guys that aren't skill guys that are trying to stick handle around people. Like if you're Evan Rodriguez, you shouldn't be trying to deke anyone at the blue line. Dump the puck in and chase it. That's what your job is. That's what you should do on the power play because the swing play where they set up where Latang's going out down the ice and he drops it and Malkin's coming with speed, that only works if you're Evgeny Malkin. These guys aren't getting to the zone that way. You got to dump the puck and chase it. So they got to do that. They got to simplify. They're trying too much. They're trying skill plays when they don't got the skill to pull it off. You got to simplify. You got to dump it in. You got to get it so you can set up because it looks really bad right now. Really, really bad. And they got to get it together. Crosby will be back soon. Hopefully that'll help stabilize some of it, but I'm skeptical from what I've seen. I don't like the scheme of it. So, I mean, you can put any players in there you want. I don't like the scheme. I don't think it's set up well. So that's something to keep an eye on going forward. Um, one thing I talked about last show. And we didn't really see. I talked about guys stepping up with Crosby and Malkin out. Especially the, the star, the skill players. Now, Tampa was a team effort. 100% everyone played well. Everyone played good. Everyone had a good game. And it was a team effort. And they played for almost a solid 60 minutes. Florida, no one stood out really. I mean, no one played bad. But you could just tell they were outclassed. But in games like that, that's when you need your skill players to step up for you. And I talked uh, on last show in my Penguins preview about how, you know, we know uh, Rust can score 30 goals. He scored in a 30 goal pace. I don't think he's hit 30, but he's been on pace uh, several times. Gensel can score 40 goals. Kapanen's obviously, a, he's a younger player, but he's very skilled. He might have the most talent on this roster. Uh, it's just if he can put it together and be consistent and use it. These guys need to step up with Crosby and Malkin out. And, uh, you know, even though Genso had a great goal in Florida, that goal was a – that was a super – goal scorer's goal. That was like a skill goal. But other than that, I didn't notice him much in that game. And I haven't noticed Russ much. I know Russ got hurt in the Florida game, and he was out. But in the Tampa game and when he did play, didn't notice him much. These guys have to step up. And even when Crosby's back, which he should be back soon, these guys need to step up. You're the young players now. This is your team. Like, as much as it's Crosby and Malkin's team, it's your team now, too. Especially Kapanen. Kapanen's a guy who he's got the skill. He might be the fastest player on this team. Um, but he's just very inconsistent. And he didn't – I mean, he wasn't noticeable through the first few games. You notice him when he has the puck, but he doesn't do much with it. Um, you got to be better. I mean, Kapanen's a guy – he could be like a Mitch Marner or something. The skill's there. And he's got the speed. It's just he's got to put it all together and be consistent. You know, he's got the potential to be Mitch Marner. And he also has the potential to be one. I don't know. I don't even know. I want to say Daniel Sprong, but no, he's, he's, he's better than Daniel Sprong by a long shot. But he's got the potential. He could also be one of these guys that has the skill but never pans out. And he, he just bounces from team to team and he, he stays in the middle. So he's got to find a way to put it together. But the skill's there. And guys need to step up moving forward here. I need to see Gensel, you know, he's going to score pretty goals. He's going to snipe, but I need to see him be more dominant with the puck. Control the game. Don't just score the goals. Control the game. Control the forecheck. Same thing with Russ. Get the puck on your stick. Control the forecheck. 
Same thing with Kapanen. All these guys. Uh, and as I said, Russ got hurt. Hopefully it's not long-term. Haven't seen any updates on it yet. Uh, hopefully he can get back soon because we don't need in- any injuries. You hate to see someone go down early in the season. Uh, and could Sid return? He, you know, there was talk he may play in Florida. I thought that was a very long shot. Uh, but now we play Chicago tomorrow night. Um, could he be back for that game? I don't think so. I think most likely scenarios you see him in Dallas on Tuesday. Uh, but, you know, Flurry comes to town. That could be a game he wants to play in. He's very close. Hopefully he gets back. But I think we'll see him by Tuesday at the latest. Now, if he misses Tuesday, you don't have a game until Saturday. So you almost another full week off after Tuesday. I said in the previous show, I like to see him make sure the wrist is 100%. Maybe he does take off till Saturday since you got a little extra time. But I'm pretty sure we'll see Crosby by Tuesday at the latest, which is good news for the Pens. So hopefully he can get in and uh, the wrist isn't bothering him. But yeah, overall, I like what I've seen through the first two games. Not as much in Florida, but they're tough. Uh, but the Penguins look really good overall. You got the the new guys that came in in the offseason. You know, a lot of Pens fans were complaining because Hextall wasn't out making the big moves. He wasn't making the sexy moves. But, you know, maybe he made the important moves, what they needed. Heinen's been good so far. Boyle, who was on the contract, he's looked good so far, especially on the PK. He's a big body, which the Penguins need, especially on their bottom six. Uh, Simone, I'm not a Simone fan when he was with the Penguins before, but he's looked good through the first two games. Um, Carter, he's looked good again. You know, I don't think it's two games, but you always worry about older guys like that and guys that come in. He was good last year. Is it a one-off fluke? He's a good through two games so far. So hopefully he keeps it up and they get it together. We got Chicago. Chicago is not that good this year. They lost the other night. We got Dallas. Dallas could be a win. Toronto is going to be a tough game, but you know what? Bring it on. I think these Penguins are going to be better than a lot of people think. And we didn't even talk goaltending. We'll talk goaltending more. We've only seen them once. They both look good. Uh, DeSmith allowed a lot of goals, but a lot of those weren't on him, so. I'm sure next week's show we'll have more goaltending to talk about and delve into in the defense. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you want us to talk about? If you have questions you want to talk about on the show or you want me to answer or topics you want me to discuss, leave them in the comments with the hashtag hockey talk. So I know those are ones you want me to answer on the show, not in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already, guys, and hit the like button because it helps us out. It gets us to more viewers. It gets us out there gives me the motivation to keep making these videos. And hey, if you're a Steelers fan or you're a West Virginia's fan, West Virginia fan, go watch our show, H&J Talk Sports, every Monday. Me and my buddy Harry have a podcast where we talk all about the Steelers, West Virginia Mountaineers. We also talk Penguins, and we talk whatever else we feel like talking about. So go watch that show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.